creature has powerful claws and fangs formed from hardened and identifiable tissue. Two of the incisors appear grossly malformed and discolored. Well, it is like nothing I've seen. We always like to base our stories in some sort of real world truth, a piece of folklore or a piece of mythology. With vampires, obviously, there's so much to choose from, from cultures all the way around the world. So rather than pick one particular legend, we thought it would be fun to create a monster that ties all of those legends together in some way. So we had an idea for a creature that lives underneath the ground and emerges every few years. Our vampire is actually an alien parasite. It invades a host body. The creatures that you see in House of Ashes, the winged demonic creatures, were actually once a intelligent race of cosmic nomads traveling through the stars on this big generation ship. They somehow picked up this alien parasite and it ravaged through their crew and their ship went out of control and crash landed into prehistoric Earth where it was buried under the ground in what is now the Zagros Mountains. Being a parasite, this alien slug needs to find a host body, a, a living body or a recently dead one. Once it invades that body, it grows inside it, killing the host if the host is still alive. And its tendrils reach out into the host's brain and hijack its central nervous system, sort of reanimating it. It then goes on the hunt for blood. It feeds on the adrenaline in blood. So in order to get the adrenaline pumping, it needs to terrify its prey. So it shrieks at them and drags the kill out until the blood is really, really pumping and then it strikes. You keep lookout. Fuck! Look out for what? We wanted to show the viewer different forms of the creature and make them think that initially it's a demon, then they think that it's a vampire, and then finally the revelation that it's an alien. So just to explain where the parasites have come to infect some of our game characters, this yeah. shows a game character who's going through different stages, is infected, starts to affect the character, and there's a final look from that where the fangs are coming through the skull. So that's one of the developments of how our classic vampire is actually a host. Another example of that is an Akkadian warrior who's been taken over by the parasite. And again, the fangs have come through, the vines are poking through the head. This human is now being taken over, his skin is dying, the parasite is trying to grow within. But we progress that into looking at the design on the alien demon, I call it. This had to have very unique elements that came through from the head design. So we've got a very animalistic head here, but also we've got the fangs. These fangs are coming from the parasite that's within, so the fangs are coming through. It's almost deforming the shape of the host. Oh, shit. What the fuck happened to your teeth, buddy? We refine that further to what is our final head, where the ear is a part of the skull and it flexes open. A bit like a frill lizard where the frill of the, the canopy comes out, our head is actually moving apart. And we've got illustrations that show that where the head is dormant and is concealed, but then as it hears and wants to resonate, the skull expands open. And that then allows the creature to hear and pick up on anything within the environment. With characters, it's always good to base at least some of it on anatomy that we recognise. And that provides a foundation for the vampire. It's bipedal and human in its structure. But we've just changed things, tweaked them, made them a bit more alien. So, for example, the ribs join together at the sternum to form a rib cage. But we've expanded it out quite a lot, and some of the ribs are fused together to make bony plates. It's just to suggest that it's had a very different evolution from a human. We tried a version with human-style legs, but in the end, we went for a dog-type leg. It just made it more creature-like and more threatening. And we added bird-like talons on the toes, just to give it some natural weapons and make it into a predator. We didn't want to focus too much on bat reference, because we were trying to steer away a bit from the classic bat-like vampire. We did go for two sets of bat-like wings. One of the shots in the game is of a vampire jumping down from above, backlit with its wings out in an attack pose. And when we saw that pose, we decided to add an extra set of wings attached at the hip joint. It just really helped that silhouette. The environment is very interesting because they can use not just the floor, 
they can fly as well. They can walk on the walls, but they've got claws. And so imagine something really interesting in a cave where you've got creatures coming towards you, you know, from every angle. I think that visually is something impactful and very interesting to look at, and it's scary. One of the interesting parts is the finding of those nuances and details that really bring the character to life. How does it move? How does it behave and act? We had motion capture and then we had the more traditional computer animation keyframing. On the motion capture side, there were a variety of different setups that we tested. We had arm extensions and then we had various different leg stilts that our creature actor used. But what was apparent when filming this was that it really limited his movement. So in the end, we decided not to use any of that and he just performed himself. Basically, this gave him the freedom to really express that physicality in acting and gesture. They react to sound like bats. We hear you. They hunt you. The vampires have these head plates, these bony kind of gristly structures on their heads that click and vibrate, kind of like a bat's echolocation. They're used to survey environments and to locate prey. We went through a lot of different iterations and we tried a lot of different things. Like I think I sampled keyboards and mouse clicks and then used a scooter fender and a wet trainer. And it made this organic clicky, squeaky sound. And then I had a friend of mine like in the States take a taser to a bunch of meat and a bunch of like organic material. And it came out a lot more aggressive. It just sounded meaner. I got something for you. And then the biggest thing that we had was this little tiny drum and a rod with fishing line in between it. So when you twisted a rod, it made this clicking and popping sound. So that ended up being one of the main tonal layers for it. But none of them quite fit right. But once we put them all together and like layered them all together on top of each other, then it started to actually work as a holistic organic thing. Something entirely new to House of Ashes, which is a classic horror movie trope, is the vampire point of view shots, which we use a very wide lens and we use some perspective distortion on those shots, which helps sell the power and hunger of the vampires as they're chasing the soldiers. And it helps make the soldiers feel very small and very weak. And doing so, it also helps us as the player realize that these vampires are inhuman and that when we're watching what they're doing, they're bouncing off the walls and they're climbing on the ceilings and flying. At any time in the game, the players could be running through an endless maze of tunnels and we use very tight shots on these with a lot of handheld, a lot of tilt again to emphasise this claustrophobicness and this tension and not being able to see what's chasing them. And it's in complete contrast then to later on in the game where we see these grand environments that they uncover, which could be a temple, a city or things like that, that we have these wide shots that really sit still and just let the player soak in that environment. This is the most complex creature that we have ever animated in this studio. But um, the challenge, is more than a challenge, is, a, is the, the fun to do it. Because it's not a real creature. You can push it in a way that you can use your imagination to make it more interesting. We're facing an enemy we know zero about. An enemy of unknown size and their home turf. Sucks to be us. Yeah! 